Hello guys, today we will be talking about the Chia GUI and just doing like a walkthrough here. So when we first open Chia, this is the screen that we get over here. And as you see, I already have a key in here, which is why it shows the next couple options here, which we saw in a previous video, create a new private key, import from mnemonics and the delete all keys. If you only want to delete a certain key, you can hit the trash can icon here and the i icon shows you personal information so see private key this here is the private key which you don't want to give out to anyone there's public key public farmer key pool public key and then you have the 24 words down there and that's just kind of to get it if you need access to it and then these would be used for the pooling so we'll just go ahead and click on this and the first page we do pop into is the full node tab and there's a couple different things here which um, are on the screen here so if we were fully synced it would say synced up here with like green text I just got this started up though so it says not synced connection status this here is used for like a troubleshooting stuff if you're not connected there may be like a port blocked or your internet's not working correctly uh, the main network name is just going to be name net main net and then over here we have peak height, which should be the current blockchain height. Um, I'm not actually sure what it's at right now. I think it's like 1.7 mil or something. Um, over here we have the last transaction block time. And then we have the difficulty. When it's fully synced, it's like 2046 or something like that. And then the estimated network size. This is for the entire network. And the recent case that's going to be around 26 exabytes there um if this is fully synced this next block section here shows us the blocks height time created if it's like gone through or not and if we scroll down just a little bit here the next piece we have is connections this here is used as troubleshooting here as well if something's going wrong you can take a look here there might be some people behind sync um, you can add people and that's more of like a troubleshooting video later but this here is definitely used for troubleshooting here uh, the next tab on the left here would be the wallets tab and this one's pretty self-explanatory but you have your total amount of chia here if you're sending chia it's gonna show that uh, if you're sending some it's pending and then the receive address this is what you give to people to donate for instance or you can send that to someone and then they'll pay you in Chia. And then you can also make a ton of new addresses. You just have to copy here or you can highlight and then copy. Um, create a transaction. This is the opposite of receiving. You send out your Chia. So you can put in an amount right here. And then you would put the person's address here. Or if it's like a company because you're buying something, you'd put in their address there. Um, the fees really haven't been implemented yet, but this is very good to do because there is something called dust storms on the Chia network, and it's essentially when people spam one mojo attacks, and it just takes a lot of the mempool up and it clogs it up. So if you put a fee, it kind of prioritizes that, uh, which is really neat. And then the transactions page down here. This just tells us what is happening. So if you farm a block while you're pooling, it would say plus 0.25. If you're sending out Chia, it would say like minus one Chia. And then the connections just tells you some other people that are connected wallet wise here. And we do also have the option here to have other types of wallets. So for instance, if you have like the holiday token you would click that and it would say like cat wallet and then we also have the manage offers here and it's not actually going to let me do that here but you can trade tokens for like chia and so forth a uh, really cool network there actually i think that should allow me now so yeah you can do create an offer you can view offers create an offer so you can pick whatever you have in exchange for like chia here so that's kind of the offer section there uh the next page here is going to be plots we don't actually have any showing here 
but if you do have plots uh, it would show up here we can refresh if it's adding a new drive in you can press refresh and it should add that there um, we can also create plots which we'll go over separately here and we can actually add plots through here as well and you would just pick from like your computer after you hit add a plot directory uh, the next page here is farm and this here really isn't going to show much since i'm not actually synchronized but it would give you a breakdown so it would show you like your amount of plots um it just give you like facts like how much you have plotted um it's gonna show you some details about the plots itself and then over here if you have a big farm you'd have a lot of latest block challenges uh, which shows you like how many like pass through filters and then you can also of course have a hundred views of like the challenges and stuff um if you have several harvesters or if for some reason you have a couple phone nodes and you get them connected it would show up under the harvester network here and this here would tell us if it's set up correctly uh, when we create a harvester and you, know, you can have a really big amount of that and lastly there is the pool tab and it's not actually going to show anything for me but if you hit join a pool you can add from a faucet source because you do need to have a little bit of mojos in order to join a pool because there is an nf key and then you can have it here and it's kind of going to tell you the points how it's communicating um there's going to be a nice visual chart there as well but yeah that is the overview of the chia gui um there is a separate section here so let's just say that we don't want to use this here for farming but you have a computer you can switch it to wallet mode and this here is just gonna load the wallet service here so you have just the wallet interface and then we have these wonderful light dark theme here where you can switch and then we do have different languages here as well that are supported and then the thing here is set up passphrase so you normally don't really check your wallet too much or at least i don't and if you just have it on a computer if you just have it normal like it is when you open it you're just going to be able to go right in but you can go ahead and do set passphrase and then you can customize that so for instance i'm just going to do an example right here so i'll just do that that and then we'll set so it has been set it's not going to take the effect immediately but if you go ahead and close the application here and it closes all that stuff down we will go ahead and reopen that in a second here There we go so we'll go ahead and reopen it and as you see uh, there will be a passphrase that you have to put in you can't even do like the basic stuff here and once you type that in now you will have full access to your wallet and that is the entire gui for you